After a record year in SPACs, that's right, SPACs, uh, in 2020, we are off to a record start again. It's not even going to be close in 2021. So what is it? And is this a fad that's going to fade? Or is this just a sign of things to come? I got some perspective coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I am the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. So Colin Kaepernick has a SPAC. I saw that in Wall Street Journal yesterday. You know if Colin Kaepernick is jumping on this bandwagon, this thing is mainstream. So what is it? And, and is this a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is this speculative? What's this all about? I, I, I'll share some thoughts and some charts here with you, but a SPAC is a special purpose acquisition company. So everything in finance is an acronym. So there you go. There's your acronym for the day, SPAC. And just like when blogs, you know, went crazy and it was like, well, you weren't anyone unless you had a blog. I mean, in the finance world or even in the celebrity world right now, you're not anyone unless you have a SPAC. Like that's, that's how popular these things are becoming. So like I said, Colin Kaepernick has one. Shaquille O'Neal has one of these things. A whole bunch of celebrities, a whole bunch of hedge funds hedge fund managers have them as well. So it's it's sort of a sign of your celebrity, number one. But really, what is it? It's a shell company. It's a blank check company. That's actually what it was called back in the 80s when these things, or 90s when they first came out. And, and let me tell you, they were shunned back then. No one liked them. No one wanted to use them. They were speculative. They were um, rife with kind of with fraud. And now they are extremely popular. So let me again, let me explain what it is. So, so you create a shell company, a sponsor creates a shell company. They don't do anything. And they go out and they raise money. They, they, they sell shares or, or, or warrants, right? And for 10 bucks a share, pretty much, okay? And so the sponsor, the people actually kind of raising the money and is gonna you know, kind of run this thing, they get their shares at a, at a deeply discounted price, but then they can raise money, and they do raise a bunch of money from other investors saying, hey, do you want in on this thing? And for an investor, you might say, well, okay, I'm gonna invest some money, what do you do? Nothing, we don't do anything yet. There's, it's just nothing, there's a shell company. And then once they raise all this money, then that shell company, that sponsor says, all right, now I've got a whole bunch of money. What company should I buy? And they go out and they buy a private company. They buy an individual company that's not already on the stock exchange. And when they, they use those funds to buy that company and presto, it's immediately listed. So now this blank check company, this shell company that had no operations now acquires fully a private operation, a private company, and immediately those warrants, those shares that were trading at $10 a share get listed on the stock exchange and are immediately um, trading at a, different, at, at a different share price and start moving with the market. So that's how it works. That's a special purpose acquisition company. Raise a whole bunch of money for no purpose at all other than to find and target a private company, use that money to buy it and kind of merge it onto the stock exchange. This is a this is a different way of bringing a company public than just a normal initial public offering. And so, um, but it's, it's all the rage. I mean, take a look at some of these charts here. It was basically non-existent, the activity, the amount of companies that went in uh, through the SPAC uh, window um, until 2020. Last year, it was a record year, 245 IPOs through SPACs in 2020. This year, it's early February, we're already at 125. So it's just off the charts. And take a look at how much money has been invested into SPACs. It is just, it's just unbelievable. So begs the question to me, why? Why are they so popular in this thing? Is it gonna blow up? Should you jump on it? The why is because number one, and I would, so okay, it's, it's faster. It's faster to raise money and, and buy a company and bring it to market. That's faster than an initial public offering, the normal IPO. So you might say, well, that's good, right? If you've got a good idea, it might as, you know, you, absolutely fast, that's good. Yeah, but it also might be rife with fraud as well. Someone just has an idea or some, celebrity with a big name and a big following says, hey, I'll do one of these things. Let's raise a bunch of money. And then they buy some garbage company really fast. Or maybe a company that's not even, that's uh, totally a, a, a fraud to begin with. 
They use these shares to buy something that's not even really operating and, uh, and they get a big payday and then the investors are left holding the bag. So, so one of the benefits is, is speed, but it could also certainly be a, a negative. Um, it avoids a lot of the IPO cost and a lot of the um, uncertainty for the, the IPO owners, the, the sponsors in this case. And so there again, I mean, that could be a benefit, but it could also create some negatives as well. And then finally, and this one scares me, they're less regulated. So that makes it faster and makes it cheaper than an IPO process. So if, if, you've, if you've got the celebrity or you've got the ability to draw money in and you could go the expensive, lengthy, and scrutinized IPO normal process, or you could go the fast, cheap, and you know not really scrutinized at all SPAC process, which one would you rather do? And so the SPACs have some attributes, but to me, show me, what, it, what is the saying? Show me the incentive and I'll show you the outcome. My hunch, guys, is this is too frothy as, as Lance Ludwig, one of our CFPs said before I turned the camera on, it's just too frothy. There's just, there's just, this seems as though it's going to end poorly. And why? And he said, you know, what, will it just crash when the market crashes? I actually think the crash would come when a few people actually do raise a bunch of money, these sponsors raise a bunch of money, they, they buy some sort of shell operation that actually has no operations at all, um, that maybe they've kind of fraudulently come up with some, you know, some, some reports or whatever, but it's really, they're not doing anything. And the SPAC uses the money to buy this fake operation. The sponsor then sells their shares, has a huge, payday and investors are just left holding the bag. That's how this is going to go. I, I just, and I can't see the future. This is just a, a, an assumption, but show me the incentive, the incentive of fast and cheap and less, um, less uh, requirements to, to, to bring it to market. And I'll show you the outcome. I mean, that, that's, there's going to be, there's going to be landmines in there of, for fraudsters. There just, there just is. So should you jump on it? Well, the other thing that I would tell you before, you know, just saying, well, I think a couple of these will end bad and that might smear the entire thing and move it from a, from a really popular idea to something, again, a, a last resort, which is what it used to be. Um, so, so something else to, to consider here is right now, we have the stock market just going gangbusters. And if you were, if you wanted to ride that wave right now before it burst, you would go the SPAC route. I, quickly, I can raise a whole bunch of money. Everyone's wanting to get in on something. I can raise a bunch of money and likely the price will go up through the roof. I mean, that's, that's what's happening right now. And yet in the brief history that we have of these SPAC returns and the companies that have actually taken it public, um, their performance has actually not even kept up with the S&P 500. And you'd expect an IPO type company should significantly outperform the S&P 500. So there is, for those of you that are watching this that are fans of SPACs, there is one saving grace to all of this. There is, they do allow an out. If the sponsor raises all this money and they can't find a company to buy within a year or two years, they, you know, cover their costs and then they distribute the money. Okay, so you're, you would be out a little bit if you invested and then they didn't find a company to buy. Uh, you'd be out a little bit, but you'd get your money back. And then the other kind of kind of um, escape hatch is when the sponsor raises the money and then they say, all right, we found this company. We want to buy this company. The um, investors could actually say, nah, I don't like it. I don't like it and get their, get their money back. Now, I don't know all of the rules with that. I don't know if there's some sort of tag along or carry along privilege that if one person says, nah, I want my money back, but a hundred other people say, no, we're doing this, if they're just tagged along or if that person can get out and at what price. But there are some outs there still, still. I, I think that there's just enough speculation happening right now and there's enough um, incentive for this to, to um, basically go really quickly in the wrong direction. I, I would tell you, I would tell you, despite the fad, despite the popularity, I would stay clear of it. Make sure that you're taking a risk level with your investments that's consistent with your overall financial plan. And a SPAC is speculative. And how much of your overall finances towards your financial plan should you be speculative with? Hopefully, hopefully not that much, maybe just some, 
some play money. So work with your CFP on that. If you don't have a CFP, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, corehorn.com, that's corehorn with a K, or wisemoneyshow.com, or just send us an email, info at corehorn.com. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.